Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick. It's Tuesday, March 9th. And this is Deaconess Elizabeth. And we're here today for your daily devotions. We're doing the litany today. We haven't done this in a while. Oop, looks like I'm a little bit crooked there. Let me fix this real quick. Okay. All right, and we are in your hymnal on page 288. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all people concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and, and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and all young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Okay, and our reading for today is in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and we are beginning at verse 21. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. No, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the feast, or what he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, 
So now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, so you also would love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. So obviously these, uh, these are the last hours, if even that, that Jesus is with his disciples and that he is not uh, under lock and key, so to speak. Um, he predicts Judas's betrayal. He gives Judas the morsel of bread after he dips it in the cup. Judas then goes out, but the disciples still don't understand what all is happening. Jesus has given a number of, of predictions and a number of passion predictions, but still, I, I don't think the disciples quite understand that he's going to be betrayed and be crucified, and they certainly don't understand that they also will abandon him. And uh, Peter, probably chief of them all, as uh, Jesus makes this prediction today to Peter, who just after Peter promises that he will lay down his life for Jesus. And, and this really calls to mind, um, you know, the, the steadfastness that we always think that we have and, and the, the level of devotion that we think that we have, uh, but yet we are at the same time weak and we overestimate um, our faith, if you will. And, uh, you know, we also can follow in Peter's footsteps, but, uh, you know, that we, we know through long gospel, through repentance and forgiveness, that um, this is the cycle that, that humanity often goes through, and uh, that when we do sin, and that when we do shrink from expressing our faith in contexts maybe similar to these, uh, that we have a place to go to find forgiveness and, uh, and, and reconciliation in Christ. And, uh, of course, uh, we're about to, to witness now the trial of Jesus as we continue in our daily devotions um, following Jesus on his way to the cross. All right, so Deaconess Elizabeth is going to introduce the hymn for us now. All right, our hymn this morning is hymn 423, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary, and we'll do just the first verse. Jesus, Refuge of the Weary, Bless Redeemer whom we love, Fountain in life's deserts dreary, Savior from the world above. Often have your eyes offended, Gazed upon the sinner's fall, Yet upon the cross extended, You have borne the pain of all. And we close now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, well, Elizabeth, what announcements do you have for us today? All right, well, tomorrow is Wednesday, so we will be having youth night once again at 6 o'clock, but um, at 7 we will be coming over for the Lenten service, so please plan on staying for that. And then shortly after the service we will be having choir practice around 7.45. Um, those are our activities for tomorrow. And then Thursday we are going to continue to have grief share offered here um, in Nice Hall and online. Um, through Zoom, and the link for that is in our church e-newsletter, and that would be at 7 on Thursday. And Midweek Lenten service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Hope you can make it for that as we uh, discuss John's letter, or Jesus' letter through John to the church at Thyatira. Uh, also, we have the email newsletter that's coming out tomorrow afternoon with some uh, additional announcements in there, including some things about uh, our youth confirmation classes. Uh, adult confirmation had its most recent class last night. Still room to get in there, but this is probably going to be the last time this coming Monday. If you'd like to join, uh, please let me know. Uh, also, we did have someone test positive for COVID uh, yesterday here at Holy Shepherd, and this individual was in worship with us on Sunday, seated in the back 
uh, of the pews on the pulpit side. So we have alerted some of the people uh, who this individual was seated around, and uh, if, if that also is your area, we just want you to be aware um, the symptoms are very mild uh, in this individual. We're just continuing to keep an eye on the situation and uh, just continue to invite your prayers as, you know, this has become a, a, a regular thing, although I know that there are some changes happening uh, with the mask mandates and whatnot. So we'll continue to keep you informed and um, continue to stay in touch with us as well. The Lord bless this the rest of your Tuesday. We look forward to seeing you back in worship soon, uh, likely tomorrow, we hope. Uh, join us either in person or online. God bless the rest of your Tuesday.